top headlines for the week ending May 25. Small states must fight against global terrorism. And more sugar workers strike against the closure of more estates. Freddy Kisun willing to lecture again at UG. Venezuela needs assistance to end the crisis. Flood affected residents receiving injection to prevent waterborne diseases. Indigenous communities being told half truth about the land's COI. Columnist tells the government to compensate sugar workers when estates are closed. Welcome to MTV News Abyss Week in Review for the week ending May 25. I am Trish Ramlal. Good afternoon. Small states have critical role to play in the global fight against terrorism. This was the assertion of President David Granger whilst speaking at the Arab Islamic American Summit in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. President David Granger, who attended the Arab Islamic American Summit in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, says a global partnership to combat terrorism should not exclude small states. This is according to information from the Ministry of the Presidency following the head of state's visit to the country. According to him, conflict between and within such states or between a small state and other states can endanger the peace of all countries. Further, the head of state says international communities should be encouraged to work towards the establishment of a global security system which would provide protection for small and large states. The president added small states like Guyana, lacking the means to combat transitional threats, must be able to rely on the protection afforded through international cooperation. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Minister of State Joseph Harmon believes that the residents who have been affected are breathing a sigh of relief after supplies were sent in on Saturday. More in this report. Minister of State Joseph Harmon, during an invited comment, says the relevant ministries have been able to reach out to the residents affected by the flood waters. Minister Harmon explained that residents have been able to get food and medical supplies irrespective of where they live. This government will find, find them and ensure that the resources of the state are placed at their disposal. The Minister of State flew into the affected region during the weekend to get a first-hand view of the flooding and how the government can further assist. So the Civil Defense Commission coordinated all of the support coming from every part of the country so that relief can be brought to those persons. I believe that they are, they are much happier now. The Civil Defense Commission, which coordinates help relief for disasters, have been asking for donations to assist the affected region. This Minister Harmon noted the Commission does not store perishables, but when there is a need to respond to such crises, an alert is made to acquire supplies. Certainly that was never enough. So we always have to ask, we we'll have to resort to the good nature and the, and the, um, the, safe, the, the spirit, the community spirit of, of companies that are in Guyana so that they can help in this effort. And like I can say to you, many persons did not require us to come to them. They were actually calling in with their support. Region 8 was hit by heavy flooding on Thursday last. Thus far, several communities have been underwater for days. Relief efforts have been made possible by the Civil Defense Commission, the Amerindian People's Association and corporate companies. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Guyana Equality Forum is against the government's intention to hold a referendum to determine whether same-sex intimacy and basic human rights should be decriminalized. Details in this report. Managing Director of the Society Against Sexual Orientation Discrimination, SASAD, Gerald Simpson, says they have condemned the declaration of the coalition government to hold a referendum on whether Guyana's colonial era law, which criminalizes same-sex intimacy and violates the human rights of sexual and gender minorities, should be repealed. Simpson believes that the government, in its manifesto, had promised to put measures in place to protect the rights of the minority group. He noted that if there is a referendum, it will only deepen the marginalization and isolation of LGBT persons as right-wing groups will undoubtedly heighten their homophobic rhetoric as is already happening on social media. The same resources the government intends to allocate to holding the referendum, they can instead use to, to implement education programs, 
on human rights, gender, and sexual diversity. Executive Director of the Justice Institute, Guyana, Melinda Chanki, also expressed her disappointment with the government's intention to hold a referendum. The Executive Director explained that based on Article 152 of Guyana's Constitution, the pre-independence laws, which includes the death penalty, buggery and cross-dressing, are contrary to the Constitution and cannot be challenged in a court. Janki opined that Guyana has incorporated into the Constitution the International Civil and Political Covenant, which recognizes the inherent dignity and equal rights of each person. She believes that the government should immediately remove the laws which criminalizes same-sex intimacy. On Friday, we will celebrate 51 years of independence, and yet the dead hand of colonialism in the form of Article 152 is strangling our ability to progress, to mature, and to create a more tolerant society. If the government wants to hold a referendum, then let us have a referendum on Article 152 of the Constitution. Let us get rid once and for all of this last element of colonial subjugation. Let us have the courage to be free. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich is quoted in sections of the media as saying that the situation is a sensitive one and requires careful attention. He noted that Guyana had voted against funding for an independent investigator appointed to assist with protecting the rights of gays and transgender people in the United Nations. Minister Greenwich said the government is not against the funding but rather is against certain provisions contained in a particular resolution. He maintained that Guyana has not changed its position on the matter. He made it clear that his administration respects the rights of all persons but must take into consideration certain implications before signing on to resolutions. Last January, President David Granger is quoted in the Guyana Chronicle saying he is prepared to respect the rights of adults who indulge in practices that are not harmful to others. The President's position on the matter was made known following calls for there to be a re-examination of the country's anti-LGBT laws. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The mother of a Jewish vendor is pleading with persons who may have information about her son to contact the family following his mysterious disappearance. A reward has been offered to anyone with information. Details in this report. 24-year-old Jamal Thomas, who operates a Jews shop at East Romvelt, has been missing since Wednesday last. Mother of the missing man, Jeanan Johnson explained to News Update that her son has been working with another guy as his business partner. The woman further explained that the two men had partnered to expand the business. Oh boy, I really don't know his name that well, but he lives in the same neighborhood where my son lives. The two of them had a problem a couple of months ago where the boy invest some money in a business and the two of them start working together. For some reason his father came and tell him come and work with him because he was working with his father and his father and him get wrong and he left and went on his own. This young man asked him you want to run the business, you want us to go into business together and the, inv the guy invest some money buying the coolers, the tent, build the bridge and everything out in Rasville where they normally had this business running together for a few months. For some reason or the other everything that the guy Ask him to do he did apparently it causing a money problem where the guy is saying that he make him invest this money and after he invests this money he need his money back my son left and went back to work with his father so this guy is not happy he's saying that my son has to pay him back whatever money that he owed him so I said how could my son pay you back when the coolers are not his own if you're investing this money you take back the things from him because he's no longer working for you and he went back and work with his father why should he has to pay back anything to you Johnson says her son left Antigua approximately four years ago and never returned because he has a girlfriend on the island. The mother is pleading with anyone who has information about her son's whereabouts to make contact with the family or the nearest police station. Please come out and say something. Tell him that his mother is on TV, his mother is on the radio station. I'm calling for him. I need my son to come home. I want to see my son before I leave. I don't want to go home back without finding my son. I'm begging anyone, anybody know, anybody see anything, please say something. 
Jamal Thomas was last seen by his father on Wednesday after he called to restock his juice supply to sell to his customers. The woman believes that someone is holding her son against his will. Whoever is having my son, I'm asking you to set him free and let him come home. If you are his friend and you're encouraging him the wrong way, let him know that his family care about him. Let him come home. A good friend always tell a friend when he's going wrong. You don't encourage somebody to go wrong. You tell them, listen, this is not a good life. Whatever it is that is going on, come home to your family. Boy, go home to your family. This is not good. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Australian investors have expressed their interest to come into Guyana to explore the extractive sector. This was announced by Minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources, Simona Brooms. Minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources, Simona Brooms, visited Australia from May 17 to 19, where she was able to meet with investors. Minister Brooms, during an interview, says investors have expressed an interest in the extractive sector. She says within the next two months, investors will be coming into Ghana to establish links. So with that project there, how can Guyanese benefit from that? They can benefit from that because definitely we're talking about um, job opportunity. The commission of the self, the director have undertaken that once they start working here, they have geologists and so on with bachelor's degree and all of that. And so that they will collaborate with the human resources free of cost as a project and get some of the project done in terms of exploration for different minerals and all of that, which would come at, at no cost to the government. Minister Brooms also highlighted that safety in the mining sector has to be improved. The sector minister stated that training would be critical given that the Ministry of Social Protection deals with that aspect. The Ghana Geology and Mines Commission has played its part to include training exercises in the workplace. The rangers that was appointed and training for them in terms of safety is one of the things that we will benefit from coming out of the trip. She also looked at the areas where women are in the workplaces with regards to company levels in the extractive industry. I gender is both male and female. I don't have a bias but um, I know the problem and the challenges that women face in the extractive industry and I'm committed and even more committed um, because at the time at the head of the Women Miners organization, there's so much but at the level of minister, anything that I can do and what more, um, I will never stop to fight. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Former lecturer of the University of Guyana, Frederick Kisun, is yet to be updated from UG's council about his dismissal, which occurred five years ago. He claimed that though he is willing to return, changes must be made in the way UG functions. Columnist Frederick Kisun, during an interview with the News Update, says he is yet to be updated with regards to his dismissal from the University of Guyana. Kisun said that he has not heard anything from either the Ombudsman office or from the university regarding his abrupt contract determination. I haven't heard anything from the university or the office of the Ombudsman since the office of the Ombudsman ruled that UG acted illegally in terminating the contract. That's it. The columnist said that he would not return to the university until there are changes in the system and the way things are governed in the council. For me to go back at the university to teach, the, uh, the whole, the, the totality of the, of the academic environment has to change. People's rights have to be respected. The government has to put more emphasis on uh, academia, etc. And until those things are in place, I'm going back to the same old nonsense. Frederick Kisun, who served as a University of Ghana lecturer for 26 years, had his University of Ghana contract terminated with immediate effect on January 23, 2012. Former Ombudsman Justice Winston Moore had advised the University of Ghana that based on legal advice, former lecturer Freddie Kisun was wrongfully dismissed and should be compensated. Parts of neighboring Venezuela have been experiencing large demonstrations in recent weeks due to its head of state wanting to rewrite the constitution. However, that has not gained the support of the largest opposition bloc, which has staged near-daily demonstrations. 
Here at the local embassy in Georgetown, Venezuela's ambassador to Guyana is calling on the regional bloc CARICOM to provide assistance to help the crisis. Find out more in this report. Venezuela's ambassador to Guyana, Rania Margarita Arita Diaz, during a press conference on Monday, says President Nicolas Maduro has invited all the groups that represent their constituents. Ambassador Diaz explained that the main opposition coalition party has not been able to and have not commenced the process to have dialogue to establish the National Constituent Assembly. I think that as a way that the Guyanese government and not only the Guyanese government but governments of this region can help in this moment as a product of the violence generated by the opposition in my country to support the government of Venezuela, the Venezuelan authorities in the international forums in which we participate for the support of the governments of this region and of the governments of the world to respect at what we have called a show of no evil will in our personal issues. And we will be grateful to show your support for the dialogue which we have asked to dialogue and to solve our internal problems. According to the presidential decree triggering the process, the National Constituent Assembly will be comprised of 500 delegates, half of whom will be elected among regional districts, while the other half will be chosen by sectoral constituencies. Those will include workers, students, pensioners, indigenous peoples, disabled people, and national business confederations. All delegates will be elected directly by their constituencies via secret ballots. However, Ambassador Diaz believes that the current violence has been triggered by funding and influences of the international media and other agencies. The opposition funded by foreign aid and the leadership and media support at national and international level have created a matrix of hatred, persecution and aggression towards government officials and to all those who sympathize with the Bolivarian thinking. The large media corporations have tried, they have tried to make people believe that there are violent protests, protests all over the country, when in fact most of these manifestations have mainly occurred in three states, Miranda, Carabobo and Táchira, three of the 24 states that make up the national territory. Nikhil Chondo reporting for MTV News Update. More than half of the workers attached to the Enmore estate demonstrated strong opposition in the form of a strike on Tuesday, May 23. This comes on the heel of the government's plan to close three more sugar estates by the end of this year. The walk saw some 700 persons marching in solidarity as they continue their struggle following the planned closure of three more sugar estates. This is according to the president of the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union, Komal Chan. And that tells you the support that they are having from the communities because you know a lot of these communities will become ghost villages down the road apart from all these different crime problem and social problems that will add to those that you have now. According to Chan, work will move at the snail's pace at Enmore Estate as majority of its workers took part in a demonstration. While the strike is merely restricted to one day, more than 60% of workers were willing to ditch their duties to express their frustrations. You had about 60% of them from the factory came out today, which previously we hadn't that number because some of them felt the government would not go ahead with this decision. Many of them, many of them are coming to believe that the government is bent in closing their state. Chan foresees larger crowds as more persons are expected to continue protesting while calling on the Granger administration for urgent engagement with the union. This follows the coalition's decision to keep only three of the six existing sugar estates and factories come next year. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Healthcare workers have been visiting every community in Regions 7 and 8, providing injections to the residents as a preventative measure against any outbreak of waterborne diseases. Meanwhile, water has receded off the lands in both regions. Details in this report. Assistant Director General of the Civil Defense Commission, Major Kester Craig, 
during a telephone interview says the water has receded in regions 7 and 8. He explained that the various teams which were sent in have reached all the communities in region 8. Additionally, the, they, they, this morning they departed to go to Waipa, Stan Hill and uh, Kaibarupai. And that's really all. So they'll do water quality testing. That the uh, GWA will do that. And the medical people will do, will, will go examine uh, residents and also administer vaccine. And the military person will do assessment of the building to see what exactly needs to be done to, to any of the buildings that may have been damaged. With regards to Region 7, a team led by the regional chairman and CDC members, along with health care workers, has been dispatched to the flood-affected villages. Major Craig says hampers have been parceled off, which are on their way to the residents. So far, they've distributed hampers to Kako, which is in, um, it is in Region 7, mm -hmm. and um, two plain loads of supplies uh, are going to there. Matter of fact, one is already there, and the second one is uh, on the way. And with that now, they're going to send to Philippi. Um, the push Philippi is already in Cameron, so we load the boat at Cameron and then send in certain supplies of food hampers to um, Philippi. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Political analyst Frederick Kisun is charging the government to compensate sugar workers following the imminent closure of three more estates and factories by year end. Due to the planned closure of the three sugar estates by the end of 2017, many persons have criticized the government. However, contrastingly, columnist Frederick Kisun, who agrees that the sugar industry in Ghana is not improving, while the economy is on a downward trajectory, affirmed that closure is needed. When it comes to the closure of the sugar estate, I, I can't in all conscience, when I study the economics of it, I think the sugar industry has become moribund. Despite agreeing with the government about the closure of their estates, Kisun stated that rewards must be given to the workers to compensate for the loss of their jobs. Some of these workers have labored in the sun for years on the sugar estates. Either you give the land to the workers, Guyanese are very resilient people, either you give the land to the sugar workers that will be unemployed, or you provide them with alternative employment. And I think it, the state has the capacity to do that. The announcement to close three more sugar estates and factories was made by the Minister of Agriculture, Noel Holder, in the National Assembly. He claimed that it is uneconomical for all six estates to remain operable. Skeldon, Rose Hall and Enmore estates equipped with factories will be closed. Already, LBI and Wales factory have been closed. The Guyana Sugar Corporation has been and is continuing to be kept afloat by government subventions. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates Week in Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us Monday, May 29 for another edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news team, I am Trisha Ramlal, thanking you for watching.